What I'm going to do tonight is take you through the procedure for converting uh, one of these three-phase military generators over to single phase. Uh, this unit I've got behind me is an MEP004A. It's a 15 kilowatt three-phase diesel generator and it comes pre-configured in either 12208 three-phase or 240 416 three-phase. Um, those voltages might be useful depending on uh, your application. It certainly is handy to have three-phase to be able to power uh, shop equipment. But a lot of people I've talked to have expressed an interest in converting their generators to single phase so they can get the full rated output for providing backup power for their shop or house. Now 12208 isn't a completely useless voltage, um, even for a house or a shop. These generators uh, are capable of supplying just a single phase uh, to a home or a shop of 12208. And uh, of course normal household current is 12240. So you're actually getting 208 volts instead of 240. 95% um, of the time that's just fine. Uh, and in fact, that's how I have my own diesel generator set up to power my shop and my house. I'm pulling one phase uh, and sending it to the house and sending a second phase to my shop. All my shop equipment, including my welders, iron worker, all my hydraulic power packs, <clears throat> all my 240 volt equipment operates just fine on 208. And same thing with the house. I have an electric hot water heater electric range, electric dryer, and all those operate just fine on 208. Uh, I do notice that the dryer and the range don't produce quite as much heat. It takes a little bit longer to dry a load of laundry or uh, boil a pot of water, but uh, it doesn't uh, damage anything. And in fact, if, I, if you look at the labels at most appliances, they actually say 208 to 240 volts. So uh, The disadvantage, however, of just pulling a single phase off of one of these generators is that you can't get the full rated output of the generator. Uh, you're limited to the, the uh, overloads uh, for just that one phase. So uh, what you actually end up getting is a little bit less than two-thirds of the rated output of the, of the generator. So it really is a waste to have a nice big 15 kilowatt generator and only be able to pull 9 kilowatts out of it. So uh, that's the reason we're going to go ahead and do this conversion. And uh, I'll step you through it and provide some pictures. And for a more detailed, thorough conversion process, uh, you can check out my thread on the Steel Soldiers forum. I thought I'd spend a minute or two explaining the differences between uh, three phase and single phase and some of the advantages of doing this conversion. Now this is the the actual waveform of the voltage that you get coming out of your wall in your house or your shop at a 240 volt receptacle. What we've actually got is two sine waves that are exactly 180 degrees out of phase with each other. So if I drop one leg, uh, what you can see is just one individual sine wave. Okay, and so what you're seeing right here is just a single phase. Um, it's 120 volts. And without uh, diving too deep into the math right here, um, what you're actually getting this is the, from the top to zero in the middle right here is actually more than 120 volts. Uh, what we call 120 volts is actually uh, RMS value or root mean square and it's 0 0.707 of the peak value uh, which is somewhere right around up here. So the difference between here and here is 120 volts. And uh, this is what you would get with uh, you know any normal thing you would plug into the wall like an alarm clock or, or something like that. Um, now your dryer or uh, hot water heater, oven, welders, all that kind of stuff, that runs on uh, 240 volts. So you'll see when I plug in, uh, the waveform actually comes down here and, it, and is exactly the opposite of this waveform. And so then what you get is a difference of 240 volts between the top of this waveform and the one that's directly underneath it. Let me go ahead and plug in. All right, and as you can see, that's your second waveform. So this is the 240 volts that you have coming out of the wall. And this is single phase right here. We only have uh, one phase that we're dealing with. Okay, this is only a dual channel oscilloscope. So is, since I don't have three channels, I can't show all three phases of a uh, three phase power system. Uh, but it's not too difficult to imagine. Instead of one sine wave, like you see right here, you actually have three. And they're 120 degrees out from each other. So you have a peak here. You have another sine wave with a peak right about here. You have a third one with a peak right about here.
and so you actually have three separate sine waves that are that are uh, going at the same time with the same height and uh, that's what three phase power is all right as I said before this generator comes pre-connected in a 12208 Y configuration and I'll go ahead and put up a picture of what the Y configuration looks like Okay, and that's a pretty standard three-phase connection. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and rewire this generator for a low zigzag. And that will output 120 to 240, a single phase, uh, just like what I was showing on the oscilloscope earlier. And uh, it should be a fairly easy reconfiguration. So we'll go ahead and get to work on it. This generator has uh, what's called a voltage reconnection board. Many of the MEP generator sets do. Uh, as far as the, the standard sets, uh, the MEP004 and on up, I believe all have this voltage reconnection board, as do their precise equivalents and, of course, the power units with these generators on the trailers. So this procedure should work for any of those generators that have this voltage reconnection board. The, the wiring procedure should be exactly the same. All right, so what we've got right here is our voltage reconnection board. And what this is for is just the two pre-configured voltages that this generator is set up for. Uh, right now we're set up for 12208. And what we're going to do is just make a, a couple of small modifications to this board. And then we should be set up for 12240. Okay, first step is going to be to remove the voltage reconnection board. I went ahead and pulled the cover off. And the next thing we'll do is go ahead and remove all 12 of these nuts that are holding this thing down. All right, I've got all the nuts removed from this voltage reconnection board. I'll go ahead and pull it off of here. Okay, and as you can see on the back of the board, all it is is a series of uh, copper jumpers that wire the uh, leads of the generator in different configurations. So um, we don't need to make any changes to this board for the low zigzag. Now if you look at the back of the board right here, you can see that there is a copper bar that jumpers these leads together right here. Now what we need to do is uh, disconnect this bar uh, from this last lead right here. These three still need to be jumpered together, but this one doesn't. So uh, what I've done is actually made up my own little jumper bars that are just these uh, leads right here. But uh, if you're just doing this conversion on your generator, what you can do is actually pull this bar out and just cut it right here. So. We'll go ahead and pull this out of here and put one of my jumpers in. We have one of these uh, jumper bars installed now. Now as you can see we've taken away the thickness of that bar from this back terminal right here. So this is the perfect place to, to install our jumper wire that we're going to be using. What I'm going to do is install that right there. I'll just leave it dangling off the side for right now. Then we'll go ahead and reinstall our voltage reconnection plate. Now that we have our voltage reconnection plate back in place, we can go ahead and install our jumper on the T2 terminal. Alright, and this is a good point to double check all your connections, because if you screw this up, you can hardwire in a phase to phase to phase short with no overload protection, which will definitely set fire to your generator, melt wiring, and destroy parts pretty quickly. So, um, Basically all we've done is we've cut the bus bar that tied these three together with this one. So we've cut it right here. And then we went ahead and installed the jumper from this terminal, T12, down to this one, T2. 
Uh, you can also install it on T8 because these are jumper together with a bus bar. Either one is the same electrical point. So now that that's installed, uh, that's all that's necessary to get 12240 out of your generator. And we'll go ahead and fire it up and hook up the oscilloscope and just double check and make sure we're getting good power out of it.